do have an opening, but do you have anything to start with, Ben? Do I have anything to start with? No, I read this book once, probably fourteen years ago. Perfect. And I did not reread it for this episode. Great. And I read this episode. Wow. 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 Yeah. Now you can tell my brain wires are crossed. I read this book via Audible. And you know, I was like, huh, it's really weird. This like 300 plus page book is like three hours on Audible. Yeah, and that, then, that was weird. And, and then and then I started looking at some of the synopsis and I'm like, I don't remember that happening. I don't remember that happening. Uh, what what's going on here? And I look it up and it's like, yeah, it's a it's an abridged version of the book. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I gave this a high star ranking, you're like, yeah, if you if you read the whole thing, you would not have. Yeah, no, you would not have. Yeah, it really it really cuts a lot out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know a little bit about this for like an about the author sort of like about the book thing. All right. If, lay it if on you want me, me and then... to do that. Uh, yeah, and then and then I'll do the the opening crawl, Ben. Hooray. Okay. So this is Vector Prime by R. A. Salvatore. It is a Star Wars Legends book, and this book is the first in the new Jedi Order series of books, which chronicled the Yuzon Vong Wars. Yeah, and how many books are in that series, Ben? Over twenty. It, yeah, I was gonna say, is it a is a real user friendly series that you can just jump right in? No, it's fucking gigantic. I read all of them though. I, I mean, they're quick reads. It's like two or three days. Yeah, they're even quicker when it's abridged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big factor. So, yeah, this yeah, first yeah. one was written by R.A. Salvatore, and I don't actually know if R.A. Salvatore has ever written another Star Wars book, and I'm okay with has. that. I don't think he has. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. R.A. Salvatore is obviously like pretty popular or successful at the very least. I'm not sure if they're the same thing. He is most well known in my opinion, for writing the, and I'm, I don't care about the pronunciation. Driss Durden? Driss Durden is one of the most iconic characters in all of D&D lore is a drow by the name of Driss Durden. Driss Durden's freaking rad. I'm pretty sure I'm saying Driss wrong. I think it's like Driss Driss Durden. Okay. They are a series of novels set in the Dungeons and Dragons Faerun world, chronicling right. the adventures of a dark elf named Drizzt Doerden, who, like all dark elves, has silver hair, and like most dark elves ever since those books came out, carries two swords. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with any of this. Yeah. Uh, there's really... <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. They're, they're oh no, fine. that's that's right. He he wrote the uh, novelization of Attack of the Clones as well. Oh, yeah, damn. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can't really be faulted for that one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, ha he had to sit down at a computer and type, "quote I hate sand. It's so <laughs> rough and coarse, and it gets everywhere." <laughs> But not here. It's so smooth. End quote. And then Anakin reached down and started <laughs> seductively stroking Padme's hand while she looked on in horror. Not like here. Here everything is soft. And smooth. Ari Salvatore has this kind of uh, really generous and say workmanlike prose. It's certainly a novel. It, it is definitely a series of things that happen in order with a beginning, middle, and end. To be fair, most Star Wars seems to be that way. Yeah. Like all Star Wars books, it's kind of like they go to a place to do a thing. It's very side quest heavy. Uh, this is also famously, and this is spoilers for a, I don't know, 
thirty oh year my old God, book. You're about, you're about to spoil it. You're about to drop big old spoilers. I'm about to drop a moon on this podcast. <laughs> this is famously the book where Chewbacca dies. <gasps> no. Who is going to who is going to say Rawr. There's practical reasons for that. A Wookiee's dialogue is obviously very hard to write in a book. And there are less practical reasons for that because Lucasfilm had not yet realized at this point that uh, Chewie is the easiest character to recast because it's just a guy in a mask dubbed over with a bear. So Disney realized that, though, and Chewbacca will never die now. Everyone else will, just as soon as they get a little too expensive. But Chewie will be there forever. <laughs> I could do an opening crawl. Do you want to do the acapella, or do you want to just like steal it from a previous version uh, of... <laughs> I don't even know if I know enough of the opening crawl oh to do an acapella. Oh, oh my god. And you called yourself a Star Wars fan, Ben. Not, like, in public. As, as you shouldn't. Yeah, that... Do you want my... So I guess I'll, I'll ask you this question. Do you want my absolutely unenthusiastic opening crawl acapella? Yes, please oh. do. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play you in. All right, so we've got a long time ago in a galaxy and canon far, far away. ba 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 it's a, it's a time of great change in the Star Wars galaxy. One year ago in publishing time, the writers finally decided that they needed to move on from the Empire storyline. After briefly bringing back a fake Admiral Thrawn and then killing a real clone of Admiral Thrawn just to be dicks, the Empire finally sued for peace with the New Republic. Unfortunately for our heroes, this isn't called Star Peace, it's Star Wars, so we gotta have another war. How can we top an evil empire of space Nazis? How about aliens? Like alien aliens from outside the goddamn galaxy. That's what we're gonna do, and they're coming in at Vector Prime. Flawless. Yeah, perfect. Yep. That's hard to do, isn't it, with me screaming in your ear? <laughs> yeah, it is. yeah it really is you did that to me last time and it's it's not no regrets like, no regrets we whatever, did it for the podcast ben. whatever it we sounds it like in the episode however he edits this it was impossible it's impossible to give the those lines while somebody is screaming in your ear so yeah i guess i'll go through so i didn't have a lot of bullet points on this because you know a bridged version so, so really, like, neither of us is prepared to discuss this book. No, but we're going to do it anyway, because that's the words about books treatment, okay? <laughs> Usually, I'm at least having read... I guess I did you. read the book. Yeah, you read the book, and, like, 11 <laughs> years ago, and I read an abridged version of the book. I remember distinctly reading this book in my first apartment. Oh my god. Yeah. Is that how you christened that apartment? No. Like, now it's a home. Now it's a home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've never done that with any apartment I've ever lived in. <laughs> so, as is tradition in Star Wars, we have to establish where everyone is because no one is chilling out with each other. So, Mara Jade, Jaina, and Leia? Is that how you say her name, Ben? Is that Jaina, yeah. Yeah, okay. So they're going to go visit Space Donald Trump, who's yeah. over there talking about the immigrants on the other planet that are ruining their planet, and he's trying to start a war. They're going to go try and negotiate this whole war thing. Coruscant's not sending their best. Yeah, Mara's actually sick with a space plague, so she's even even worse off. And Jaina's just like, she's like flying them around. Space that's her. COVID. That's her thing. Yeah. Yeah, space COVID. Except there's no vaccine for this one. Well, that's because in a galaxy far, far away, they've learned that vaccines are bullshit. Yeah, they just put you in a tank with only underwear, and they flood it with goo or whatever, and Bacta. That's how they. Yeah, Bacta. Really, that's what we need. We need to get rid of all modern science for like an underwear tube. Anyway, Luke and Jason 
uh, they want to establish a new Jedi Order, and for some reason that requires the Senate to approve. I don't know why, but they're back trying to convince the Senate to like ratify a new Jedi Order so they can. They I'm can... guessing. I'm guessing it has something to do with wanting the Senate to pay for it. <laughs> Maybe. But maybe a lot of the senators don't want it because they they don't like the fact that the Jedi are stopping smugglers and uh, those smugglers were paying bribes to the senators. Oh, uh, now where are they going to get their bribes from? Lobbyists. But I mean, let me explain to you how a bribe works. If you give, if you're taking a bribe, you give me a cut of that bribe to open my Jedi school, and maybe my Jedi don't stop the next smuggler. <laughs> Yeah, Luke doesn't Luke doesn't do that. He should. It would get things done a lot quicker, but he doesn't. And the story doesn't go anywhere in this book. I assume that's a big thing later in the series. It's called the New Jedi Order, so I assume is that is that accurate, Ben? I would say based on everything I remember of the books, there is not 20 plus books worth of plot. <laughs> that's fair so it, i don't know it seems like it's really difficult for him to get a chamber with a bunch of chairs where they can all sit in those chairs and talk about stuff that they might do eventually but like these chairs are really comfortable so qui-gon you just you go handle it yourself or whatever i'm gonna sit here i'm comfy i don't know what you're talking about i'm talking about the old jedi council ben Luke wants to make a new Jedi Council. Which, again, he could do that if he were going to pay for it himself. Yeah, he could just get some folding chairs. Get I mean, off the government teat, Luke. Taxpayer dollars don't want to pay for your weird religious shit. Separation of church and state. He has a gigantic temple on another planet. We'll just use that. I, bro, you're, I'm with you. I would not, if I were a senator... <laughs> I can think of half a dozen reasons why I'm not financing the Jedi Order. Number one, unlicensed military organization. Number two, I don't like you. Number three, I don't like your religion. That, and, and that's that whole storyline, Ben. That's all we have to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> and then Han and Chewie and Anakin, they're fixing the Falcon. And then uh, everyone decides to eventually go to Lando's house. Are you Again. assuming the audience knows who... Jaina, Jason, and Anakin are? They're all Han and Leia's children. See, yeah. back in the Thrawn books, Leia had Jason and Jaina. The twins. Um, and, yeah, the twins. And then later, she had Anakin. And they've just been rapidly growing in the background, and now they have to be, like, people and stuff. Do you think Hitler's, uh, like, abandoned bastard daughter was, like... I'm going to name my first kid Hitler. Try to salvage the name. <laughs> yeah. And somebody talked yeah, her out of that because be that's a real bad idea. Well, to be fair, most people don't know that Vader and Anakin are, in fact, the same person. So you don't even need to salvage the name by the logic of your own universe, Star Wars. If anything, she should have named him Vader. I have to feel like at this point, they do know. I... I, I I have no evidence to suggest one way or the other because no one ever talks about him outside of Luke or Leia. It's like he didn't exist anymore. Wait, I know they did. Yeah. They mention, uh, they mention the Emperor from time to time and how he, you know, how he thought about, you know, non-humans. <laughs> yeah, the smelly non-humans. I do like how they justified a lack of uh, costume budget. With racism, <laughs> yeah. Space. I mean, if, if if the shoe fits, right? If the boot fits. <laughs> yeah, they do have weird shoes. But yeah, so we're all going to Lando's house, Ben. Everybody Put a pin in that. But everyone will eventually show up at Lando's house. Yes. Okay. They all they trickle in. What new uh, market scheme is Lando living he in this has... time? He has an asteroid belt that you can <laughs> race through. <laughs> and Lando, Lando's like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you kids in like two years. That was back when this other crisis happened. And it's like, Lando, he's got to realize the pattern that they only show up when a crisis is about to unfold, 
right? They really, they really do only show up at Uncle Lando's house when they. <laughs> I, I need your mole miners. I, I need your uh, asteroid racers. I need your Luke is just going from door to door, isn't he? Just begging for money. <laughs> Lando, do you happen to have a spare Jedi Council chamber just laying around? We could really use one. I would prefer one with like a scenic view of a large city, but I will settle for one that is inside of a giant temple. If you happen to have one, could Has really Luke use one. Considered preaching the good news oh. of the Force to the non Force sensitive in exchange for a small tithe of 10% of everything they own. <laughs> Has he, have they considered when they stop these smugglers that they just take the smuggled good and then sell that and there you go, you're going to quickly rack up enough money to just build your own order. You can go build your own Coruscant. You don't need old Coruscant. Have you considered that smuggling is essentially how the Jedi Order got started? Yeah. Like if you hadn't met a down-on-his-luck drug dealer in a seedy bar... You wouldn't be the holy man you are today. Yeah, so, you know, come off your high horse and start dealing some drugs, Luke. I was going to say get a job. Oh, what, Grand Master of the Jedi Order isn't a job anymore? Apparently not if the Senate can say no, it's not. <laughs> I don't care what you call yourself, Mr. Skywalker. Just file your space taxes. So, m elsewhere, Ben... At the Meanwhile. very edge of the galaxy. There's a place called Exgal 4. That's a station for Extra Galactic 4. Which I thought may have also been where they came up with the name Exegol for the ninth movie. Because they sound pretty similar. No one who was involved in that movie has ever read a Star Wars book. No, of course not, Ben. They went on Wikipedia and just... Quickly looked around and went, that sounds like a cool name, done. They did not do one instance of, of delving into the Star Wars community, <laughs> I promise. All right, Ben. You're probably right. Probably right. So, at Excal 4, there's a guy, a sneaky guy, who's sabotaging equipment so that it will miss... Vector Prime entry into the galaxy by some unknown force. Uh, then he releases a bunch of bugs that he's like, I know these bugs are going to destroy the planet and it's going to be hilarious. And uh, then when some when it looks like a comet's going to crash into a nearby planet, he's like, eh, don't worry about it. We don't need to go look at it. Just just don't worry about it. I don't know. I don't know why you 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 researchers. Uh, are in such a hurry to research things that are happening. Like, uh, maybe we just all stay here until we die of a plague. How about that? They don't okay. do that, by the way. He has to... Some of them go to look at the, uh, the comet. The, or an asteroid, or whatever it is. It, it hits this, this ice planet... But it doesn't leave any debris or explosion or anything, Ben. It's just really weird. And then Yeoman Carr just starts killing dudes. That's his name. Yeoman Carr. Is... He's like, all right, I'm done Wait. sabotaging equipment. It's time to sabotage people. He is his rank killing. Yeoman or is his name Yeoman? I think that is his name because he's not referred to anything else, and it's spelled different than what you would expect it to be. It's Y-O-M-I-N, as opposed to, what is it, Y-E-O-M-A-N? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's weird. That is weird. Also, he's a freaky alien, but, like, even more alien, Ben. He's got a bug on his body entire face that masks his hideous form where he's gouged out an eye and ritualistically cut his shit up yeah i, I remember this now <laughs> yeah so it, it is supposed to be like a classic horror movie setup where there's like because because you could even see like this is exactly how dead moon starts basically minus the enemy agent the inside job, yeah. Yeah. 
something crashes into a thing. We don't know what it is. It came in from outside the galaxy. <gasps> They're alien aliens. Super aliens. Yes. What Who knows take... what they're capable of? You, you know how like everybody everybody around is always talking all the time about how like you know the only thing that'll ever unite humanity is an alien threat. Well, that works just fine until you form a government with all the aliens, and then we start that infighting, and then we're like, you know what would really unite the galaxy? Super an extra galactic <laughs> threat. <laughs> <laughs> then we'd realize how much we all have in common with each other. <laughs> You might be a smelly alien, but you're a smelly alien from this galaxy, so you're okay in my book. At least we're all part of the Milky Way, you know? At least we're all Milky Men. Yeah, Mil... Uh. <laughs> what is, uh, that brings up another question that you probably don't want to be asked, but is th- what is the Star Milkians. Wars galaxy called? Oh, I don't think it has a name. I think it's just the galaxy. Yeah, I don't think he has a name. No one's ever called it a name. Disney, we can name get it. on that. Give it a dumb name. Oh, you want? To, okay, yeah. What do you want to name it? it has, it um, has to have a stupid name though, because it's Star Wars. The Mouse House. The Mouse. Ma- oh, oh, that hurts. <laughs> but the legends couldn't be the Mouse House, Ben. Oh. The Moose House. There, there you go. Perfect. Mooseians. That's what they are now. So yeah, that that crew, by the way. They do go and they inspect that impact, and they're like, huh, it's really weird that there's not any debris. Now, in my version, they immediately come across some debris after saying that there is no debris, and that debris is living creatures. Oh, no. Uh, Apparently, based on the Wikipedia, or Wikipedia, based on that... Uh, they spend a really long time circling the planet until mm-hmm. they eventually find the debris. Mm-hmm. But either way, their ship is taken out. And but you see, Danny don't you Queef feel cheated? Captured. Don't you feel cheated of content? Like, if you had spent there another a... 20 to 30 minutes listening to <laughs> them look for debris then you would have not had to think about your sad life. One of my points as I was taking notes was, I expected more of a mystery, but this is actually very quickly paced. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's not really a mystery because, again, like... The Paul Tremblay thing, I guess. I, I, you know, I shouldn't really compare this to Paul Tremblay because Paul Tremblay is a much better author. But hey now. It, it is the thing of, like, if you give me the enemy perspective, it does sort of rob some of the tension. Yeah. What if, what if God said that you needed to sacrifice a few dozen planets in order to save the galaxy? Huh? <laughs> the Force says that every other Tuesday. <laughs> what are you talking about? Force does seem to get off on just blowing up whole planets it's it's 50 percent dark side man oh my god you're yeah right. yeah oh my god do you so it's like those those uh those sweet and sour gummy bear things where they're like first they're a little sour then they're yeah. a little sweet it's like that's oh my god force. that's the force yeah first the force will kill a billion of your people and then it will help you rebuild <laughs> we are 30 minutes into this recording yeah, we are. All right, Ben. So let me briefly tell you about Leia's visit to space Donald Trump, who is Namor. Uh, she's we can like, call him hey. Namor. Disney owns that too. Yeah, they do. They sadly, sadly do. Holy shit. So <laughs> yeah, so Leia's like, hey, I wanted to just talk to you real quick about this whole starting a war thing. And he's like, well, if you have anything to say, why don't you go say it to those other filthy, dirty, disgusting disgusting disease-ridden sacks of shit on that other planet tell them to completely disarm all their weapons and submit and there won't be a war okay all right see you later dumbass and that's it but also it's really weird ben because when she tries to touch him with the force it's like there's nothing there what's up with that ben I bet he's one of those extragalactic aliens. 
These four horrible, radical left Jedi investigations of your all-time favorite president, me, is just a continuation of the most disgusting witch hunt in the history of our country. Oh my god. What if he is? Oh yeah, he's communicating and giving giving detailed orders to Yeoman Carr. All right, well, that was, that was easy. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. So yeah, everyone's at Lando's, including a guy, uh, <laughs> hip something. He's like a Jedi, but he's like, he's like a hot Jedi, right? He's it's got, not... oh, wait, I feel like I know this. I feel like he's around forever. He does, he does, Kip Duran, he does, uh, yeah. he has like a group of, uh, of mercenaries called the Dozen and Two. It's a really bad name. The Dozen and Two Avengers. You should have yeah. just been, you should have been the, the, the Baker's Dozen. You should have just, well, well, Ben, if it helps, it's about to just be the Two Avengers, maybe even the One. Um, so they're at Lando's, uh, Jaina breaks his record on, on, I was gonna say pod racing, but no, asteroid racing, and then he's like, hey, I gotta go, and, uh, we gotta go be Jedi, just imposing our will on everyone, later, and they're near this, this planet called Serpendal, right, Ben? And, and there's a bunch of, like, weird asteroids that are... Oh my god, they're closing in. Those aren't asteroids that are. Pew, 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 pew. So apparently they can, like, pull your shields off of your ship. And when that happens, they're totally fucked, right? So Kip, being that he's the hot one and probably going to be the most marketable one, who knows, he escapes, leaving his men to die. I've, in his defense, they're all kind of already dead by the time he escapes. One of them, his second-hand man, who is a Jedi in training, is captured to be tortured uh, because they want the Yuuzhan Vong want to see what it takes to break a Jedi. So, yeah, you know, there's that. I hated Vector Prime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here. I was like, "Am I selling I, you on it? <laughs> you uh, I reread it." So, I began my Star Wars now Legends journey. With Legacy of the Force, which is a seven book series. And that takes place after yeah, this series. I, I went back and read the New Jedi Order because the the events of this series are referenced so much in the next series that I wanted to know what they were all about. And oh my god, if I had not read <laughs> those other books, I would have just put this one down and never gone back to Star Wars Legends. <laughs> this is this is like the worst jumping in point. This is worse than um Heir to the Empire. Oh my god. Yeah. Unless you have the abridged version. I even then <laughs> what you're describing to me is um I, I'm I'm having a hard time even thinking of anything to like add to this conversation. I'm like <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, their shields, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they can pull their shields off, Ben. Isn't that weird and crazy? It's, yep, super weird. I already knew that they were weird. <laughs> but the point is, this all happened near Serpendal. And oh, was also, that the point? Was yeah, the point because, that that all happened near Because Serpendal? also, Ben. <laughs> well, shit, also, if it's near Serpendal, ben, then we're fucked. Yeah, because the bad guys are like, ah, next planet on the list is Serpendal. But also... Lando is like, hey, Han, since you're here, you want to deliver a package to Serpendal? <laughs> Fuck am I, like a level 12 adventurer? No. <laughs> <laughs> Drop that well, shit in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, Han decides, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Sure, so the moon's get, not going to fall on it. Yeah, they get down to the planet, and and Anakin's like, oh, oh my god, I I can sense a lot of, like, fear. And there's, like, people, like, running and screaming in the background. There's, like, people screaming, the end is near, and we're all going to die. He's just casually telling his dad, like, 
God, yeah, I'm feel, feeling a lot of fear here. Uh, I, I do going on. like to imagine in all of these books, like <laughs> Han just constantly unimpressed with the Jedi. Because like there is so much of this like, yeah, people are running around screaming. We're all going to die. Uh, there is no God. We've been forsaken. Like. And Han's like, and, yeah, wow, a lot of fear, man. And, how I don't know how you pick that up because I'm Anakin, not getting any. Anakin's <laughs> like, I sense fear. And it's like, yeah, me too, with my ears, you dumbass. I'm, I'm looking around. I don't even need my ears. I can just see everyone has a panic look on their face, and they're all trying to, to get cl- the hell out of here. They're climbing on our ship like the U.S. just pulled out of Afghanistan. <laughs> So, so yeah, then uh, the mayor of this fair planet. <laughs> the uh, mayor of the name. planet. I'm going to call him Mayor McCheese. <laughs> uh, yep, that's, exa- that's the only thing to call him. He's a, he's a Cheeseburgian. <laughs> and, and from the kingdom of, of McDonalia. McDonalia. So... Yeah, so he's like, wow, you're real perceptive. There sure is a lot of fear around here. And they're like, pray tell, fine mayor man, why is there so much fear? And Han's like, what What the fuck is that? When did you guys get like a gigantic moon? And, and Mayor McCheese is like, no, that's a regular moon. <laughs> yes, sir. You see... I have been battling the moon for the last three days, and every day, or every cycle on the third day, it crashes into the planet, and then I play this stupid song on my ocarina, and it all resets, and I keep trying to find all the clues and the puzzles that'll make it stop falling, and it's just like, I can't figure it out, and I'm not looking up a walkthrough, I don't even like this game. (laughs) I don't know why everybody's so into it, it's so... Not like the best Zelda. It's just like a reskinned like Ocarina of Time. I don't like Zelda. the masks. <laughs> and 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 I'm sick of this moon. I'm sick of this moon. You know what? Fuck the planet. Take me with you. I'm done. I am turning this off. Let the cycle be broken. Let the world end. Wow. No, that's like one of my favorite Zeldas. And in fact, I have a Zelda randomizer where it just randomizes all the item placements. I play that too. I'm so, like, (laughs) okay, I'm just going to look for another ship. Okay, you know what? (laughs) I don't, I hate that game. I hate time-based challenges. So even with, even with uh, the abridging of this book, they still have to take off from the planet get all the stragglers off who are trying to hide on the falcon and then go look at the moon and see that it is indeed coming down and then anakin senses some sort of creature pulling it down and then they land back on the planet and then they take some sort of i assume swoop bike i don't fucking know over to where the thing is and mayor mccheese sacrifices himself to kill the thing I, he was like, I've done, I, I've done my duty. I you can't vote me out of office now. I don't remember what happened, but now all <laughs> I'm picturing is Mayor McCheese in, in like a fist fight on top of a giant satellite dish a la Goldeneye. And like he gets thrown off and dies like Sean Bean. Yeah, you know what? Yes, that is what happened. That is that is what happened now. But he had He's, like a grenade strapped to his chest. Yeah, so he blows up blows the creature. Up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, unfortunately for them, <sighs> the moon is already gonna crash into the planet. So Mayor McCheese kind of died for nothing. But maybe we'll build some statue in his, in his honor or something. Because on he's what a big damn hero? Well, when we go back, okay. And we, Would we go we are... back in what, like three billion years when the planet has <laughs> cooled? <laughs> we, we can shoot the statue out from a ship at the planet, okay? 
I'm not paying for a statue. You know what, Luke? I am so sick of your goddamn frivolous requests of this Senate. <laughs> we are not your personal piggy bank. I am not building a statue of Mayor McCheese for you to symbolically shoot into a molten rock that used to be his home. But this will really inspire the troops, okay? The troops died on the planet with him. Chewbacca was one of them. Yeah, the spoilers again uh it looks like they're all gonna get off the planet but then there are two children and chewie's like i'll save them but then the falcon something something gravity and chewie's like well shit he shrugs he throws the two kids onto the falcon and anakin blasts away and then a moon (laughs) squashes chewie like a bug and then a bunch of crazy people sent hate mail to Ari Salvatore and death threats. Death threats are a little extreme. <laughs> did, did they really think Ari Salvatore alone made yes. the decision to canonically kill thought, Chewbacca? <laughs> they, they thought that Ari Salvatore walked into a, a room, put his feet up on the desk, and is like, hey, Georgie, how do you feel about killing Chewbacca? And George is like, George is like, oh, I think that'd be like poetry. It rhymes. And then, and then, and then R.A. just he holds his hand up and be like, you know what? Don't care what you have to say. I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> so he did. I'm just going to go back to eating Chinese in a food court. <laughs> this was a year after episode one came out, I think. Yeah. I, wow. I do remember. I, this was at the very least after the special editions. I can't remember. Was the name Anakin mentioned in the original? Yes. Yeah, okay, it was, yeah. In Return of the Jedi, he's like, I knew you used to be my father, Anakin Skywalker. And Vader's like, don't call me that bitch name. But yeah, what, what about Anakin? Is it just because... Oh, just, just the name. The name. Is... I, I wondered. Okay. I always wondered if they named the kid Anakin as like a tie-in to the prequels. No, cause... they actually did name him Anakin in Return of the Jedi. No, but I mean, I still wonder that because, like, how many people besides the the Uber nerds really remembered Anakin? How many besides the Uber nerds are reading this book? Valid. Yeah. Valid point. If I tell you Dexter Jetster is gonna and his his uh, uh, cafe <laughs> his yeah his fifties yeah, diner his fifties yeah. diner. <laughs> I remember Dexter Jetster. Or whatever his name was. That from is from the Red Letter that... Media version. <laughs> yeah. review of the Phantom Menace. What's sad is I remembered his name even before that review because uh it was on the box of the Attack of the Clones cereal. Um it's a pretty good cereal, Ben. The weirdest shit sticks in your brain. <laughs> you It you was know sweetened so corn little. puffs and marshmallows. <laughs> You know so little about most pop culture. But I know who Dexter Jetster is. He can identify a Camino saber dart, Ben. Oh my god, I don't even <laughs> remember that much. All I remember is Obi-Wan went to that dumbass cafe, and I was just looking at all the 50s diner stuff, and I have no idea what happened in the scene, because I was like, that's a 50s diner in Star Wars. <laughs> Nobody in Star Wars can even wear a t-shirt. They wear like jerkins and medieval trousers. <laughs> and there's a 50s diner and this man is wearing a wife beater and flipping pancakes. Like this just always existed in this universe. Yes, Ben. Obviously. Didn't you <laughs> picture that when you saw the original trilogy? You're like, there's obviously a 50s diner somewhere on Coruscant. Mm-hmm. I hope they get to go there some time. And there's a there's a smuggler smoking cigars. Oh, God. Is that what they were called? Yeah, that's what fucking... Uh, I, I forgot his name. The guy from the Thrawn trilogy who steals ships. He oh, the Marlboro Man. Yeah. The Marlboro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you identify him, because he smokes tobacco. Yeah, that's how you can identify him on another planet in another star system. It's the only man in the world who smokes tobacco. <laughs> the numbers are going down. The number of U.S. adults who smoke tobacco is way down. 
This yeah, is the last it's not, guy. It's not cool anymore. Yeah. And when he dies, it's never mentioned again. Yep. Where are we at? Chewie dies. Uh, moon. Moon hits Chewie. That, yep. That's the sound of the moon hitting Chewie. Uh, Han is all distraught. He's angry at Anakin. Um, I they understand. have like a real like like uh, Lord of the Rings movies. Denethor Faramir relationship after this. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, yes, I wish you had gone in his place. Yeah, I was going to say, it's my understanding this lasts for the rest of the time. Anakin's and... life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they never reconcile. Anakin dies before Han can ever say, like, you did the best you could. There was a goddamn moon. Well, and it's also like... I mean, Han's obviously overcome with grief at the death of his, his we're gonna say, second wife. Yeah, we're going to say partner. and we're heterosexual gonna s- life partner. I, we're going to say partner. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to use that term in all of its modern connotations. So I can tell you, Ben, that there's a lot that's cut out from here. Uh, do you want me to fill in the gaps, or do you want me to just give you what I was given? I think it would be dishonest for you to fill in the gaps, because okay. you do not read them, and I do not remember them. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, the Solo children, they're going to protect some evacuating civilians. Where did all three Solo children come from? Don't worry about it. But the Yuzong Vong are attacking the people who tried to get off the Serpendal planet before it got mooned. And they get into some modified TIE fighters after a whole lot of arguing with their parents and Lando about how it's not safe, but like, eh, fuck it, let's do it anyway. So they get in these TIE fighters, and they all link minds, Ben, and they coordinate in perfect unison or whatever... Uh, but then it's too much for Anakin, and he has to jump to light speed, and he flees the scene. But they're victorious, Ben. Is that, that jogging any memories loose? So what I remember about this book is, it, you know, the moon falls on Chewie. That's the main thing anyone who's familiar with this is going to remember about this book. Yeah, I was shocked it wasn't the finale. It was like halfway, a little over halfway it's, through. It's almost exactly halfway. Oh my god. The um the As second if it were like a TV show. It's right at the top of the hour, so that you'll stay tuned for the second hour. The second thing is that it introduces the use on Vong, um, their organic technology, their force. I don't even like immunity isn't even the right w- word, but the force doesn't work on them. They're not part of it. Yeah, there's just a void, Ben. And I think that's the big thing. That overshadows anything else that happens in the book. Because like I said, not just this book, but all of them. I think there was a big meeting at literally Skywalker Ranch. I didn't make this up. He owns a ranch called Skywalker Ranch. Yeah, he does. And they got together with all these authors who were like big in the, I would say like merchandise book industry. A lot of these people write, you know. Warcraft books, Diablo books, Dungeons & Dragons books, uh, Star Trek books, that sort of thing. They got a bunch of them together. They wanted each of them to take a book. They planned out all their stuff. And one of the problems with doing a book that way is like you you know your start and your end. You know where the character's got to be when your book ends. And you can't really let the plot evolve, so you have to... Just have them do things until they wind up in the spot they're supposed to be in. So the Hmm, book was written very familiar. The book was written based on bullet points. It reads like it was written based on bullet points. And also part of the reason this sounds very side questy is because I expect these authors probably literally write side quests like they, they probably literally write video game style content a lot. And so it's there's a lot of like going to this planet to do this thing. What sticks is the introduction of like their battle meditation stuff, the the new Jedi powers, the new characters, because Jason and Jaina and Anakin, to a lesser extent, do become main characters. 
that's yeah, one of the things do. Legends does really well is Legends has its own cast. Yeah, and and the no talent card in this one, Ben. I'm shocked and also surprised because I mean it's a good thing. I'm glad he wasn't there. What would he do? <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> I want to say a Talon card appears in the New Jedi Order. I think everybody gets an appearance. There's like so much stuff because Timothy's on writes a couple of these. Well, then, yeah, he would definitely appear. Well, and also, like, it winds up over the course of 20 books, the Yuuzhan Vong War, it goes on a really long time, obviously, and they, they are winning before they are losing. So at some point, like, the criminal. Uh, the criminal uh, lawman distinction sort of falls apart, and it's just like, who here does not want to be a slave to the Yuuzhan Vong? We're all on the same team. <laughs> yeah, even the even yeah. the Empire gets in. <laughs> yeah, I I know they do. They form a new galactic. I think they call it the Galactic Alliance or something. Yeah, yeah. It it takes a while to find to find its stride. Most of these early books are just introducing the capabilities of both sides. And yes, you are right that they are winning before they are losing. They they get a victory in this book. They get a victory in like 75% of the books. We're talking about the heroes, right? Oh, no, I'm talking about the Yuuzhan Vong. Oh, good. Good, because they should. No, in this book, it's... It's not like a, a straight up like you'd save the day, but the Yuuzhan Vong do get their asses kicked at the end. After they destroyed a planet. Yeah, after they ran two planets, really, because Exgal is now a poisoned wasteland, and yeah, Serpendal has a moon fused into it. So after they destroyed two New Republic habitable planets, the Yuuzhan Vong lost what? They lost their world ship and all of their uh, vanguard. Oh, no. I bet they don't be... have a fleet of those. Yeah, that would be really bad <laughs> if they did. But also, let's not... Let's... Exgal isn't really a planet. It's like a research station. And Serpendal, those were like... Uh, I want to say, like, Wild West, like, do, are they really, really part of our, you know? We, we talk about this in every Star Wars book, but one of the big problems is, like, the way war is portrayed in Star Wars books is that habitable planets go down, like... <laughs> With like an you alarming... Could, <laughs> you could compare the destruction of a planet in in Star Wars universe with the news you hear about the war in Ukraine. Like you hear about a town that's being fought over or that the Russians push past this town and the, or the Ukraine army kicked. Um, yeah. The Russians they're like, oh, such and such. damn it. We lost, we lost an entire planet. Uh, two trillion people are dead, but uh, yeah. we'll get them. We'll get them tomorrow. We've... Yeah. That's the thing. But, but the thing is in the, in the Ukraine war, I mean, and I'm, I'm knocking on wood as I say this, Things aren't like wa- wiped off the face of the earth. Like this isn't this isn't destruction on that kind of scale. As horrible as it is, like imagine. Oh, well, now you're getting back into ah, uh, oh, what's her nuts? The Dragon Republic, where they're like, let's poison all of the food <laughs> supply and let's yeah. kill everyone. It's like, what are you gonna rule over at the end? You you poisoned all the food. Now you get. You're fighting to see who gets to starve afterwards. That, that's the thing. Like, it's always been a problem with Star Wars, but fortunately, they have an endless supply of habitable planets. We we don't know how many there are, but they will never run out. Which is good because we also Death Star them to just all the time. They had a thing called like the Sun Killer or the Sun Eater or something like. They they just kept busting out bigger and more dangerous super weapons. Oh yeah, there's also I that makes me remember, Ben. Earlier in this book, there is a representative from Alderaan. And I went, Huh? You don't have a planet anymore, sir. Who do you represent? The refugees of the planet Alderaan who settled on one of the many uninhabited inhabitable planets. <laughs> Must have been. 
We called it New Alderaan. They would. We installed a shield this time. Ben, the Death Star just negates the shield with how powerful it is. So is our the shields. Bomb. Our shields can't repel fire power of that magnitude. Yuzong Vong, they, they strip the shield. It's a little different. See, they use the power of gravity to something, 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 rip the shield off. And then without shields, you're a sitting duck. That's another power that they introduce. Is that, like, one of the things that the Yuzong Vong War does well is making the Yuzong Vong seem very alien. Because you do realize that one of the things that unites most of the galaxy is they do all kind of use the same technology. But not the Yuzong Vong. That technology is sacrilege. All your technology should be grown. Yeah, that was kind of dumb. <laughs> I, th- I heard their backstory was like they came from a galaxy that's basically dead. And it was ruined by a bunch of highly advanced tech-based civilizations. So yeah, the Yuzong Vong were like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Yuzong, there you go. The Yuzong Vong, that's what happens. Uh, that This is the continuation of Dune, Ben. This is what happens after the final Frank Herbert and also those final Brian Herbert books. Yeah, final? He's not done yet. He, he hasn't written anything past, uh, what is it? Is it Sandworms of Dune? Yeah. Goes Hunters of Dune, Sandworms, right? Or something like that? I don't think he's written further into the future, but I'm sure he will. No, it's it's called Star Wars. We're already here, Ben. He just <laughs> needs to write a book that links the two. Someone needs to suggest going to another galaxy, and also maybe we grow all of our stuff. And uh, there you go. You've connected it to the Yuzong Vong. Just trying to see here. Yeah, 2022, he wrote another Caladan book. Yeah, but that doesn't... That's not... That's not further into the future from Sandworms. That's just more of the same, hey, do you guys like all that stuff that Paul got rid of almost immediately? Well, then, how I got a book for you. It's called Useless of Dune. It's where we talk about stuff that Frank didn't really care about or realized didn't work, and then he got rid of it. And then we just focused on, like, the changes to Arrakis. Yeah. Bull of Dune, where we see a bull gore a man. But it's told from the perspective of the bull. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. I I don't even know, man. All right, Ben. I'm going to wrap it up because I've I've got two bullet points. (laughs) All right. Because it cuts so much. Oh, wait, no, three bullet points. I forgot to mention uh, Luke and and Mara, they go to X-Gall 4. They, they figure out some shit went down there, right? And when they get down there, everyone is missing. And also the air is poisonous, which wasn't the case a few days ago. I think the and, two things might be related. And, and Mara finds Yum and Car. What and did you just yeoman say? Yeoman car. Yeoman? Yeoman car. Oh, okay. You didn't really, but you I, really like I tried to throw an accent on there, Ben, because also the Yuzong Vong all have accents. Yeah, they all talk like this. What <laughs> what the fuck was That's that? That's exactly how I use on Vong. This is how I use on Vong sounds. I'm glad that D- Discord is cutting like half of what you're saying. It sounds awful. Yeah, the family sound. So yeah, uh, they have a fight, Ben. For you see, Mara has learned the ways of the forest. Also, she has a plague. I told you that, right? So she's yeah. fighting disease. Like Michael she Jordan. Just... What? The championship. He went out there with the flu. Oh, okay. Well, he's Michael fucking Jordan. Yeah. She's Mara fucking Jade. Yeah, the flu just made it more of an interesting challenge to him, I'm sure. He still won. Yeah, I know! He's Michael fucking Jordan, of course he won! 
Next time, it'll be like, yeah, next time, give me a real challenge, like break my leg or something. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> give me a baseball bat. So, yeah, yummy car. Uh, he's He's throwing all kinds of weird weapons at her, like some sort of spreadable living jelly <laughs> that sticks her to the ground. And Shut they have can- a life. A lightsaber on spear duel, and uh, she kills him. She gets the upper hand, and she slices and dices him to death. He's dead now. (laughs) You know what's not one of the things that uh, everybody remembers from this book? That her womb gets attacked by the disease for some reason. What? Yeah. Anyway, what's that? Okay, no, I didn't remember that. I remember she's, (laughs) she's supposed to have a kid sometime soon. So yeah. that might be why they brought that up. Um, weird. Uh, do they say womb? I don't remember that part. God. I'm gonna assume yes. Because That's Leia like, just casually uh, breastfeeds her twins in I extreme don't, detail in the in the third oh, Thrawn yeah, book. Yeah, I do remember <laughs> that. I do remember that. No, I don't re- like, okay, womb is another word like flesh. A fleshy womb? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. You say uterus, you know? I'm, I'm there. I'm there with that. Womb is just like, I've never heard anyone say that and and not have been being weird. What about, so there's uterus, what about meterus? <laughs> is, okay, first off, is that real? I don't know. Is that real? No. Okay. You can use that one. I'm sure that's really funny in, in your little anatomy classes. Oh, oh God. It, it sure is. But regardless, Mara Jade hasn't had her kid yet. No, I don't even think she's pregnant yet. Okay, well then the oven's fine. She's going to have a kid. Don't worry about that. Yeah, they're going to name him Ben. I know. Ben. I'm aware. Yeah. Just like old Ben Kenobi, even though that wasn't his name. Well, to be fair, Ben Kenobi told a really great story about his father that Luke wanted to believe, and Obi-Wan told him the real story after he had found out on his own. So, who does he want to believe? I think Ben Kenobi is the cooler of those two guys. Am I right? Obi-Wan was kind of a dick. Should have just gone with uh, the Frank Zappa names, you know? Should have just been Moon Unit Skywalker. (laughs) Out of respect for Chewie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So Luke doesn't do a whole lot in this book. I'll get I believe, used to that. I believe the abridge kind of uh, cuts him down even further because he and Jason go to the planet to rescue those people who were kidnapped. And then, like, they're fine at the end, but I'm sure they did a bunch of stuff that just wasn't on the recording. Well, so I would say get used to Luke not doing a whole lot. For most of the rest of Legends. like Is that because he's so powerful he could solve any problems? So the conflict has to be, uh, should I use the power? Or uh, the conflict is, I won't get there in time? Yeah, pretty much. Because like, he and Mara are on the same spot of land while she's fighting for her life against Yum and Car. And uh, Luke is like, oh, no, Mara's in trouble. And he arrives after she has killed him. Yeah, Luke is Luke is pretty much able to, if the thing can be defeated with a lightsaber fight, he can pretty much handle that. Yeah, doesn't he kill the big bad at the end? I don't remember. I'm sure he does. We're past the point where he's he doesn't want to use violence to solve his problems. We're but past I, that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that, though, because I, I like Luke getting sidelined. This may be a controversial statement. Well, he's too powerful. Like you said, most of the games after this, like Kyle Katarn, 
he does all the fighting and shit, and then, like, Luke is just there for a few cutscenes where he chops through people like they're butter, and he's like, oh, we have to go stop them at this thing. Kyle, you continue your mission here, and I'll go back and warn the others. Kyle Bye. in the books. Yeah, I bet um, he is. He also almost had a moment, I think, with Mara. I don't know if that happened or not, but... No, then he, it was... Then, they, then he hooks up with Jan and... Yeah. I like it because it makes more sense for Luke to be busy <laughs> for a lot of this stuff. Like, a lot of the conflicts don't start as universe-ending tier conflicts so once once there is a new jedi order established it makes sense to feature other jedi like yoda isn't the the character we follow in star wars yeah can you imagine it could be written written by stephanie meyer and it could just catalog his day in excruciating detail he gets up he rolls out of bed he exchanges one robe that looks kind of dirty with another robe that looks dirty he goes so, downstairs <laughs> i'm gonna stop you right there i'm gonna stop you right there and i'm gonna ask you if you would not read a book where yoda goes to a high school and has to romance a girl i you had me until you said it has to romance a girl he's he's full-on steve buscemi hello fellow kids <laughs> it's yoda in a backwards hat <laughs> And he's, like, trying to talk to the kids about the toad. We're gonna do some toad. You in? You're gonna do toad? What's the big deal? Let me tell you about it, Dead. You'll get chills! Hello, kids. Fellow kid am I. Exactly. This is already gold. He's walking around with a cane. <laughs> They're like, you don't, you don't look like you, you are a kid. Like, at all. I guess he could he could Jedi mind trick them. Yeah, they dumb. all see him as a kid. And who are you to say a kid can't walk with a cane? Why are you so ableist? Okay, that's a fair point. Although Yoda does not look like a kid with a cane. He looks like an old man hunched over his cane going, My back! My back! Who wants some Werther's original? I got the kind without sugar because... The doctor says I need to cut back. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you, I would watch this. I would watch this or read this. I, I, I would, it would be can, stupid, can you just imagine? but I would I, I, be down. I want Stephanie Meyer to write it. And like she, it's, it's just Twilight, but instead of Edward Cullen, it's Yoda. And instead of his weird Mormon vampire family, it's the Jedi Council. <laughs> and, and Bella goes over there and she's like, I want to be like you, Yoda. I want to be a Yoda. She's and, too old is what someone will say. Yeah. And, and it's like if Yoda, uh, like if Yoda bites her neck, she turns into a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> they have, and, then, and then having a weird CGI baby makes sense. I, so are the werewolves going to be the Sith? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. The evil vampires are going to be the Sith. The werewolves are going to be like um, the good Yuuzhan Vong. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even know there were going to be good Yuuzhan Vong. I thought they would you know, kill them all, Ben. Well, they don't kill them all because, you know, what was Aragorn's tax policy? Did he kill all the baby orcs? What what were Aragorn's policies as king? You know what was his taxation policy? How did he handle the orc problem? I mean, yeah, exactly. Were, and and he says hundred thousands of orcs left over at the end of the war. Did he did he campaign on a policy of genocide? Yeah, Let's just we had to address that question. Like, <laughs> so there are some some Yuuzhan Vong survivors. I think Luke hides. Oh, I read that they go off on another planet and they fly away into the unknown region. Yeah, Luke knows where they are, but I, I think he hides them because, understandably, them and wants yeah. to kill them. Yeah. All right, Ben, I'm going to take it home. <laughs> take it home. There's a battle over Helska Four. That's where that world ship crashed earlier. Not Helska Four. 
Yeah, it's burrowed into the ice, Ben. How could you assault it? They've got a Star Destroyer, and they've got a, a squad of X-Wings and shit. And things are looking really well, but Star they, the, the Yuuzhan Vong, they're just they're too, too well-coordinated, and they completely wreck faces. They're just too handsome and muscular. Yeah, they rip off the shield of that Star Destroyer piece by piece, and... Reveal its naughty bits that they then blow off with Yuuzhan Vong technology. Why do they have technology. a Star Destroyer? Because they had... Like, Ben, where did all the Star Destroyers go? Obviously, some of them went back to the New Republic, right? You gotta use the capital ships that you have because the Emperor blew a whole bunch of our resources on two separate death stations that we blew up. We need more of that Dunium. I'd have preferred so, yeah. a Mon Calamari cruiser. Myself. Well, they got a Star Destroyer, and don't get attached because it's dead now. Wouldn't have happened if it was a Mon Calamari cruiser, but they didn't exactly. have that, Ben. Exactly. And they were like, well, shit. We we had an option of either attacking right now or waiting for reinforcements, and we got our asses kicked. And then Anakin's like, I know how we need to win. It's so easy. You see, all the Yuuzhan Vong, they're connected somehow, the way that I was connected with my siblings. That's why we had that scene earlier. You remember that? So, I'm thinking we destroy whatever's connecting the Yuuzhan Vong together, and bing, boop, bop, they're not going to be able to coordinate, and we'll win the day. And they're like, wow, Anakin, but how are we going to do that? It's deep in the planet. He's like, ah. But I've got a plan for that, too. Lando, do you have any of those gigantic shield ships from all the way back from Thrawn just laying around? And Lando's like, I already got them on the way. I'm like, great. We're going to reflect not the sun's rays. We're going to reflect the psychic energy from the, the thing that's controlling the Vaughn down there. We're gonna valid reflect as the that. Force. We're going to reflect it back at that. It's not as valid as the Force because... Uh, my religion says there is nothing else besides the Force. If you ever say that again, I will choke you with my mind, you heathen! Well, you can try, but I got this satellite dish here that's just going to reflect your psychic powers. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, they're like... Uh, uh, all right, we, we go in there with our shield ships. Most of them are blowing up. We're getting our asses kicked again. We didn't bring a Star Destroyer this time, so we don't even have a capital ship. Uh, but then, uh, beep, boop, bop, Ben. Um, so, this, real quick, here's a science lesson for you. Is this like a catchphrase for you? Here's, here's, a catch, here, here's a science lesson for you, Ben. You ready? So, there are, there are three states of matter, you know, Gas, liquid, solid. And then there's a fourth state of matter. Do you know plasma. what that is? Ah, you would say plasma. But what if, in fact, it were a... Dunium? <laughs> Dunium? What, what if it were, in fact, a... Fuck, I even wrote this down. Uh, a... Uh, mezzicanly wave, Ben. Mez mezzicanly wave. What if what if that were the fourth state of matter, Ben? Well, it would be the fifth because plasma is a thing. No, no, not at this point. Scientists never discovered plasma, Ben. This I'm pretty sure you like <laughs> shoot plasma bolts. <laughs> nope, you, you shoot uh light really really powerful light uh does it come out in a bolt <laughs> no more questions so the mezcanely wave is what happens when uh you achieve near or absolute zero temperatures again i feel like you'd be reflecting sunlight and thus you'd be heating up the planet but no you're reflecting psychic energy i guess and cooling it down what <laughs> they're f wait i'm sorry they're freezing the psychic energy they're no they're directing it at the planet and the planet is freezing you see what? i understand this science is a bit beyond you you s <laughs> yeah here here's a quote 
we can shut the volcanoes off, or at least we could freeze the waters around them. How are we going to do that? That was Anakin. Now Han is saying, how are we going to do that? It's already almost as cold around the planet as it can be. Almost, but not quite. Luke chimes in, absolute zero? How are we going to do that? And Anakin says, evaporation. I... <laughs> so evaporation I... is the opposite of what he is talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where you're adding more energy to a system. Yeah. You're turning from a liquid to a gas. Well, the evaporation and... process itself would take the energy. So like when your sweat evaporates... It cools you down because it took that energy away from you. Yeah, but what if we reflected energy at the Why? planet to cause evaporation to cool the planet further? That would cool the planet. Absolute zero, Ben. Well, that, okay, that would cool the planet <laughs> if all of the heat left the planet. Yes. But it wouldn't. And but why? What if? <laughs> okay, so why are they trying to do that? Like, like, what is that supposed to stop? Because the planet shatters like a glass ball, Ben. Okay. <laughs> so they destroy as the a... world ship and the Yamas that is controlling everyone. Wasn't the planet going to blow up anyway? Why would the planet blow up anyway? I thought you said about volcanoes. Yeah, we're freezing the volcanoes with the energy, and we're freezing it by evaporating water, Ben. I, I don't see how you don't understand this brilliant science lecture. It's the fourth state of matter. You go from evaporation to mesocanly wave. I don't remember this at all. <laughs> it's probably for the best. Ben, I... I... I thought I misheard, and I went and I watched a YouTube video about the battle, and the guy, who is a big Star Wars fan, was like, now, I'm pretty sure that the science is, like, completely wrong here, but here's what they said happened? Yeah. <laughs> he destroys a planet by evaporating it, uh, the water on the surface, to cause cooling, uh, that which would... then caused it to shatter. The end. <laughs> like <laughs> that would. I mean, <laughs> but the end. And this is where you put the Lucas. This is where the credits are going, Ben. That's the. That's the end. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> get copyright struck, so I'm just gonna use what you did. Um. Wow. Okay. Oh. Um. Hmm. And yeah, they're like, ah, those Vong sure did give us an ass whooping. It will be a problem if there's more of them. The end. <laughs> also, Mara is really sick. I think they're trying to sell us on the idea that even your favorites can die now. Look what happened to Chewie. Are you? Mara could die from a plague, bro. I don't even remember Mara being sick. Like, that's how unimportant that is. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I do remember this being really boring. I re <laughs> this, so, this is the only R.A. Salvatore book I have ever read all the way through. I I just truly do not like the way he writes it it is incredibly bland. Would it have helped if one of the Jedi had two lightsabers and silver hair? No. I'm... Oh, okay. Well, well it, you want to show me your deviant art page? I don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> we'll call him <laughs> Jedi Master Driz Duarden. Yeah. Yeah, oh, completely I different had no, character. I had no fucking clue where you were going with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I I remember this one being really boring. It's strange that the science is so bad. Like, what you, you wait, point out where the science was bad, Ben? 
Name I mean, one point the one thing the like was I, I guess I was spoiled by Timothy Zahn because that is like the one thing. I mean, he obviously has the Star Wars science where it's like, OK, lightsabers and, and hyperspace or whatever. And we've got shields, so you have to land your military and and go in. On yeah. Foot. Timothy Zahn had to work within the confines of the series, but when he constructed set pieces, they were always somewhat grounded in science because he was a physicist. So I guess I got spoiled by that. I don't know. But yeah. All I can say is I, I I remembered really not liking this one, and even the terrible summary you gave, I was like already falling asleep again. <laughs> Terrible I was like, I summary. Just, Come on, I, I was, I, I was I there. I just simply do not care about <laughs> the the cool thing is the Yuuzhan Vong show up and they are an alien threat. They're even kind of doing like horror movie shit, but then they they just spend so little time on that. Yeah, because we had to talk about the Jedi Council, Ben, and uh. Kip Duran. One thing that does get better as the expanded universe goes on is a lot more of the argument being made that the Jedi don't get a free pass on all logic and reason simply because they are cool to look at. But why not? Do you see how cool we are? We've got laser swords and I can move stuff with my mind and also my hands. I have to have my hands for it. Like, I think where where the uh, Legends sort of ended was a series where Luke was getting uh, kicked out of the, <laughs> of the New Republic. He, he was basically exiled because the Jedi had, at this point, broken so many laws that the only way they could keep going was if they pinned it all on Luke and kicked him out. <laughs> Which he he agreed to. Um, of course he did. He was kind of ready to be done anyway. <laughs> yeah. But they, yeah, they they pinned that all on him. And I think that they made a good, a good argument on both sides. Because it's like the Jedi did win a lot of your battles for you. But the Jedi are also responsible for a lot of battles as well. Like well, if they if they would just quit falling you. to the dark side, you you have to weigh the benefit of like oh yeah there's these god tier warriors but like if one of them falls to the dark side which is like all but guaranteed to happen like once every twenty years, uh, well, they take the whole galaxy. With in, okay, in the Jedi's defense, okay, maybe you shouldn't have been born into a galaxy called the Star Wars galaxy. You should have been born into the Star Peace Galaxy. They're pretty well off. Everyone over there gets along. But they you're weren't. in the Star Wars they were, Galaxy. They were born into the Moose Hoose Galaxy. We already decided that. <laughs> I forgot the name already, so I was just going to call it the Star <laughs> Wars Galaxy until you've corrected me. But, yeah, that's that's the problem with them. Uh, you gotta got to have wars to have a Star Wars yeah, I don't know. It's it's a rocky start to what is ultimately a good series. I could, I would go so far as to say you could skip it. Like the only thing of note that really happens is the moon falls on Chewie, and even then, I like, would say you don't have to skip it. You could just listen to the abridged version. It's like three hours. You put it on one and a half times speed, and you just you call it a, a lunch break. I yeah. I normally don't like. I, I normally don't encourage abridged book it, book in, book books bookmanship. I don't like abridged things. I like it long and boring. Long and this, boring. It's, in that's this case, exactly how you like it in bed. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I want everyone involved to wonder: Is it over yet? <laughs> But yeah, this this is one you could definitely abridge because it sucks. <laughs> I, I you you rating this highly really like takes the wind out of my sails because it's like, did the audiobook come fully produced? Did it have like the Star Wars music and yep. stuff? Yeah, yeah. See, that's that's the cheat. It, it like, comes produced and they abridged it, so I didn't have to just. 
Again, I was like, wow, the pacing is really good on this book. I didn't expect that from a Star Wars book. It's like, yeah, it's because they cut out, like, over half of the fucking book. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd go with you on that. Because I can tell you right now, I I read the book. It does not stick with me. But what did stick with me was, like, the Legacy of the Force series. The problem with the New Jedi Order is, like, 20 books. It was just so much material. I do remember certain important notes, like the, you know, the sacking of Coruscant and all that stuff. But this one, yeah, go for the abridged. That's my recommendation as well. If you must, which you you don't have to. Do the abridged if you want or don't. I don't care. Words about books. You you know what I'd rather have than, uh, you know what makes Anakin's bad science a little bit better? What's that? That's not an army. That's people. Yeah. And and the next line wasn't, oh, this will be easy then. <laughs> We're about to watch a lot of our friends die. <laughs> yeah. That's not an army. They're just people. <laughs> okay, well, uh, <laughs> Mow them that's down. A prof- <laughs> yeah, it's a professional army versus a bunch of random people. I'm betting on the professional army here. Yeah, that's like the kind of thing like a Roman turned to another Roman and said is like a as a relief when they saw the Celts. That's not an army. That's just people. God, shields look at up. that. They're, they don't even have armor. Yeah. yeah. Get, shields up. Phalanx is out. Let's do this. Yep. I'm Ray. Ray Star Wars. Ray Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. Take us home. Where are we at? What are we about? Who All can... right. <laughs> if for some reason you would like to contact us, Maybe you'd like us to do the rest of the new Jedi Order. I'm only doing one a year, so if you're ready to buckle up for the next 20 years, <laughs> then okay. Um, yeah, you can check us out on Twitter. It's WAB Pod, Instagram at Words About Books Podcast. We have a Discord. Uh, invite link is in the description or the show notes, depending on where you're watching this, listening to it. We have a blog at blog.wordsaboutbooks.ninja where you can see my reviews. And perhaps Nate's reviews one day without the jokey joke, sarcastic nature of words about books. I am not posting a review for this one because I am not going to reread it and I don't remember it well enough. Maybe I'll just post one line. Sucked. (laughs) You just post your picture. Sucked. More boring (laughs) than I remember. Ben. (laughs) Uh, Didn't like it when it was described to me either. So... (laughs) We also have a Patreon if you think we deserve a little something extra. We do quarterly bonus episodes, which are finally edited and posted. We've got Dead Moon, by Peter Klein's uh, up there, and that took a lot of effort, and I, I don't know if anybody's listening to it, so like, go do that. Um, we also post outtakes, and, and we do some other stuff. And one of the other stuffs we do is I, I give shout-outs to people who contribute, quite frankly, too much money to our Patreon. And those people are Isekai Sensei-sama of... <laughs> here we go. That time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster podcast also can be found at animepodcasterreincarnation.com. Jamie gravy man the if you want the gravy blog where he reviews movies movies such as knock at the cabin i guess i don't know what the m night Shyamalan movie was called but he reviewed that one we did last week and um we got spooky shy shy with a y on tiktok spelled c-h-y we also have Last but not least, and I always say that, and I always save him for last, because it's the most dramatic reveal of the entire podcast. John Bierce. (gasps) John Bierce is an actual author who is most famous for his series of fantasy novels called Mage Errant. John has also written The Rack. We have 
covered both of those on the podcast and John has even been on the podcast. You can check out his books. You can also check out his Patreon where he posts short stories. You can vote on which short story he will post if you are a patron. I don't think I have anything else to say. Me neither. So let's just talk for another two, three hours and then I can post an abridged version. All right. Sounds good. So what do we want to talk about? I broke my bike today. Oh. Yeah, but you already told me about that, so I don't really care. Come back and tell me about that in about 10 years. Okay.